I'd now like to introduce Rick Steves. He's a respected American travel writer, author, publisher, uh, activist and television personality. Most importantly, his eponymous tour operator brings many clients to Europe each year. In his case study, we'll learn how to tap into the motivations of the US traveller and how best to serve their wishes and expectations. Rick, tell us about yourself, your company and your philosophy. My name is Rick Steves. I run a company called Rick Steves Europe. Uh, for a couple of decades, it was called Europe Through the Back Door. And the philosophy is, uh, well, the mission is to inspire Americans to get out there and enjoy the world. And uh, we see Europe as the waiting pool for world exploration. So we want to inspire and equip Americans to go beyond Orlando. And uh, I find that uh, for a lot of Americans, after they take that first step to check out international travel, they realize that it's quite inviting quite efficient and safe and economic, and they then travel a lot. And I think it's more important than ever that Americans uh, get to know the other 96% of humanity. So that's what powers our, us in our work. I've got 100 people I work with in the Seattle area, and we're having more fun than ever. Now, Airbnb kicked off demand for homestays in recent years. Rick, how is this playing out for 2018, and are there alternatives? I've spent 20 or 30 years looking for hotels to recommend in my guidebooks. I've written 50 different guidebooks for traveling all over Europe and many of them very important listings of restaurants and hotels. And a big uh, new player in the game are crowdsourcing sites and uh, sites like Airbnb. Um, I think it's a powerful new source for travelers. Uh, and uh, I think uh, Airbnb lets people do what I used to do is walking up and down the street and knocking on doors and seeing what it's like uh, through websites. Uh, so it's efficient, it's economic, it's, uh, it almost uh, makes it uh, demoralizes me as an independent researcher to be out there looking for good B&Bs in, in the Cotswold villages when they're all on Airbnb. Uh, the flip side is there's an ethical issue about uh, Airbnb is it ruining local communities. It certainly makes it tough for a regular person to afford an apartment when the landlord can make a lot more money renting out to short-term guests through Airbnb. And uh, the consequence is that you don't have as many people living in a community, which makes a lot of the local shops and, and markets that used to be vital because of local customers no longer vital. And uh, the downside of that is it changes places that were charming for locals and for travelers uh, once upon a time because you had um, that sort of uh, foundation of a local community. It drives the local community away and uh, the Ramblas becomes a touristic street instead of a local street in Barcelona. And the Boqueria Market becomes a place with, uh, with smoothies and, uh, and fancy fruit and shish kebabs rather than a place where locals will go to get their fruit and vegetable. Rick, what do you see as the most exciting new opportunity for Americans traveling to Europe? I've been, I've been spending four months a year, every year in Europe for the last 30 years, and I uh, spend April and May in the Mediterranean. I go home in June and then July and August north of the Alps, all to keep my guidebooks up to date and work on my tour program and help produce our TV shows. And uh, always I'm trying to keep up to date on what is new opportunities for American travelers. I'm always impressed at how Europe can um, open up these amazing new cultural sites. Uh, every year you go back and there's some new great museum in Athens or a, a wonderful new elevator on top of the uh, Victor Emmanuel Monument in Rome, or, or there's a, suddenly there's a, a museum in Dublin about the Irish diaspora. Uh, suddenly the old leprosy hospital in Bergen, Norway is a beautiful uh, uh, exhibit on leprosy. Uh, Dr. Hansen, of course, was the guy who pioneered the medical treatment of leprosy. Uh, all over Europe, you've got new ways to appreciate the history, art, and culture of Europe. So for me, as a travel teacher and a guidebook writer and a tour guide, tour operator, it's just important to know what are the experiences and, and what are the, uh, you know, um, admissions, what are the, what are the turnstiles worth paying to go through. And uh, every year in Europe, there's more and better. Thanks, Rick. The information age, of course, has allowed travel writing, vlogging and blogging to become a mainstream activity um, and thus arguably is having a major impact on trends. Has it all been positive or are travellers getting unreliable fake news from some quarters? Well, I make my living writing good old-fashioned guidebooks. I've written 50 guidebooks. I've got 100 people that work with me in Seattle making these guidebooks. and. Um, I believe in the value of a guidebook today just as much as ever. Of course, there's all sorts of information online on the internet. Uh, there's crowdsourcing, there's TripAdvisor, there's blogs and blogs. Um, 
more information is good, but uh, we also get the entry. Uh, nowadays, anybody can throw up a blog or a, a comment on TripAdvisor or something. So uh, it's more important than ever that the savvy traveler understand uh, what is the validity of this information. Yeah. All of a sudden in Paris, uh, simple-minded travelers are all going to Tex-Mex. Why are you eating Tex-Mex in Paris? Well, it's number one on TripAdvisor. Is it really number one on TripAdvisor or is that Tex-Mex restaurant uh, gamed the system to be such that they get higher uh, listing than they deserve? I don't know. Uh, but um, I think that it's important for a savvy consumer these days to recognize that People have an agenda when they get information out there. Uh, information isn't free. Information, when it comes at you, is is expensive to motor it toward you, and somebody wants to monetize that. Uh, tourism is a huge industry, and everybody wants our money. And as smart consumers, we should recognize that just because a place is highly promoted, it doesn't mean it's worth your time. It means it's highly promoted. And a lot of the beautiful discoveries in Europe are places that just don't have a promotional budget and they have no reason to organize people to promote them because in a lot of cases they're free and they don't get promoted like the more highly profitable places do. So yeah, it's an exciting new time. Um, I'm still thinking a guidebook is a $20 tool for a $3,000 experience and to me just a good old fashioned guidebook is if you're using that, if you're equipping yourself with good information and expecting yourself to travel smart, you can and if the guidebook is any good it'll, it'll earn its, its uh, investment back on the shuttle in from the airport. That's great. Thanks, thanks very much for your contribution.